In this video I want to go over using the AR2 software for your own custom robot. This uh, robot you see in the picture here had a gentleman email me with some questions on how to set up the parameters and calibration to make the AR2 software work for his robot. This is a, uh, a 3D printable robot that's out there that's fairly popular and I've, I've had quite a few people emailing asking how to get the AR2 software to work for this type of robot and for other types of robots. So that's what I want to go over on this video. Um, first thing is is wiring. So if you go to the project page, you can download the schematic. And here, the schematic shows the the uh, step and direction pin outputs from the Arduino to the stepper drivers, and then the the wiring for the the stepper drivers out to the motors. So that's the the first step is to get the robot wired up per the schematic. So you can see here on the right, I have a wireframe model for the robot. This image, you can find this embedded in the Excel file on the project page for the kinematic model. So if you wanted to refer to this picture, um, you can find that there. And then on the left here, I'm on the calibration tab for the AR2 software. We have the uh, Denovit Hartenberg parameters here, and that's the first thing I wanted to go over. So the um, link twists don't change. They stay at their default values, negative 90, 0, positive 90, negative 90, positive 90, 0. Then the, uh, the link lengths, the A values, um, those are going to change. So let's start out with A1. This value from um, is shown right here. That is from J1 over to J2, the shoulder offset. So this 3D printed robot that um, we're working with does not have that offset. It's a vertical straight up and down robot, so it doesn't have that. So A, A1 is 0. Then the next value, A2, this value right here, the length from um, joint 2 up to joint 3, that values um, we found 220.66 millimeters um, and then A3 that's this value here some robots have a shoulder offset from um, the end of arm 2 up to where uh, the, the forearm starts uh, neither the AR2 robot nor his robot has this uh, offset so again that's zero so is A4, 5, and 6 are all zero then we get to D1 the uh, D1 value right here, that's from the base up to joint 2. So that's 230.95 for this robot that we're working with. And then um, D2 and D3 are 0. Uh, the D4 value, this value you see up here at the top, the distance from the center of the spherical wrist back to joint 3, that's negative 246.06 and then uh, D5 is a zero, there's no, uh, the center of the spherical wrist overlays uh, joints four, five, and six, so there's no, there's no offset there. And then um, the D6 value, as you see up here, from the center of the uh, faceplate back to the center of the spherical wrist, that's going to be negative 168.27. Um, and then the joint angles stay their default values. That's 0, 0, minus 90, 0, 0, and 180. And those are just the, the rotation offsets that are used in this um, Denovit Hardenberg uh, uh, parameters for this robot. Uh, the next thing is the, the calibration values. So, what uh, this gentleman found when he was um, figuring out how many steps it took for his robot to complete these the angles, these are the angles we used. So we have minus 170 to positive 170, and that took uh, 30,224 steps to make that move happen. And then the J2 position, um, this uh, the way that the parameters are set up for, for this robot, um, we're at uh, 0 degrees to, or excuse me, from negative 132 to 0 degrees, and that took um, 8,918 steps. So arm number two, when it's all the way forward and the robots are fully outstri outstretched, it's at zero degrees. Um, joint three, the, uh, the parameters in my robot, I didn't do an arm back configuration, so the elbow does not fold backward um, in, my, in my model or my software. So I have the J3 angle limit just set to one degree. Um, so that it doesn't go to zero and then uh, the all the way forward is 141 degrees and that took 39,240 steps to make that move happen the J4 uh, minus 165 degrees in the full negative direction and 165 degrees in the positive direction and that took 2,934 steps J5 
um, negative 105 degrees to positive 105 degrees and that took uh, 8,213 steps and then the J6 rotation is negative 155 degrees to positive 155 degrees and that took 6,625 steps. Now the other thing with this robot is that he found that he had some motors turning the wrong direction so we changed the um, motor direction outputs. You notice in the AR2 robot the default is all zeros but if you're doing your own custom robot you can change these values and these will flip the directions that the motors are spinning. So um, joint 2 had to change it to a 1 and joint 4 had to change it to a 1 so joint 2 and 4 had to reverse uh, for the kinematics to work correctly for the, jog, for the robot to jog in the correct directions. Now these values up here these are the calibration directions for the AR2 robot um, and these values you would change uh, depending on which side the limit switch is on uh, for the axis but the robot that we're working with here does not have any limit switches so that's part of the purpose of this video is to go over how to make that calibration happen so essentially this robot doesn't have an auto calibrate ability so we're not going to use auto calibrate for this uh, custom robot that we're talking about and you don't need to worry about any of those uh, values right here. So the first thing we need to do is jog the robot to the vertical or rest position as you see in this image here. So th this robot is, uh, if I draw a line here straight up, that represents the robot fully in its vertical position. Um, we need to jog it so that each axis is perfectly straight up except for this angle from joint 3 forward in this direction you're going to want to jog it forward about one degree so you'll want to use an angle gauge or, or something like that to make sure that this uh, from joint 3 forward is forward one degree. Now when you're jogging the robot to that vertical position um, none of these values are going to be correct yet you're just going to be using just the joint uh, buttons to jog the robot to get it into that position and if you hit an angle limit because there is angle limits uh, programmed according to um, the calibration values that are here on the screen um, so if you hit an angle limit you can just hit this button that says force calibration to mid-range and that'll just kind of trick the software and put the software back and make it think that each joints in the middle of its move so that you get around those uh, angle limits and then you can continue jogging the robot so once you've got the robot in that vertical position and you've got the um, J3 is at about one degree forward then what you need to do once the robot is vertically straight up and down is you need to disconnect the power from your stepper drivers so that you can continue working with the software and jogging the software but not actually move the robot again you're just you're going to uh, kind of pretend like we're jogging the robot so that we can get these values to uh, equal what they need to. So now that the robot's in the vertical position, now I'm actually going to jog all of these values until joint 1 shows that it's at 0 degrees, so that uh, joint 2 shows that it's at negative 90 degrees, joint 3 is at the 1 degree that we talked about, and joints 4, 5, and 6 are all at 0 degrees. So once we've jogged all of these um, joints so that the um, the current joint position matches the vertical position of the robot where we jogged it earlier once those match we can come here to the calibration tab and we can hit teach find calibration position and so now if we go back to the main control page we've jogged it to these joint positions which are going to equate to these X Y Z yaw pitch and roll positions and then when we come here and teach find calibration position the uh, it's going to put that position in here and so now from here forward if you ever want to calibrate your robot you just need to jog it to the vertical position with joint three about one degree forward so now you can press the execute find calibration button once the robots in the vertical position and then um, you can see calibration uh, calibrated to find calibration position and this is how you can recalibrate your robot every time just by jogging it to the vertical position jog it to J3 being about one degree forward and then press that button and your robot will be calibrated. So once you've done that um, you can turn the power back on to your stepper drivers and you shouldn't have to to uh, shut power off to them anymore once you've completed that procedure there. Um, 
you can see here we have the uh, it's just a little demonstration of the robot jogging once this is completed so the robot goes from the rest position to the forward position this shows it moving uh, negative in the x direction positive in the x direction Now this is the y direction, but there's no sixth axis, so it doesn't appear to be jogging correctly, but it is. You can see the center of the wrist is moving left to right, and then this is z up and down, jogging down, and then the z position jogging up. And then back to the rest position. So that concludes this video. If you have any questions, please email me. My email is on the project page. Thank you for watching.